Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And this is the first video in a series where we try to build a user's forum using PostGraphile. So I had created a video in 2020 on how to use PostGraphile. It's, it was an overview on how you can actually create a GraphQL API with just a Postgres database. And it became the most viewed video on my channel with really good like to dislike ratio. And there were a lot of comments here which asked me to take a deep dive into PostGraphile. So the aim of this series is to actually introduce you to all the concepts inside of PostGraphile and how you can use PostGraphile to create a GraphQL API in mere minutes. So before we start, I just wanted to talk about this repo here. So this is a users forum repo on my, on my GitHub. And the cool thing about this is that the main branch of this repo will always represent the latest state of the project, but you have these other branches. So like I have a video one user login, which I'm currently working on. So if you want to go back to how the code looked at the end of video number one, or at the end of say video number five, you can just check out that branch and you can take a look at the code. There will be a link in the description for this repo. This is a public repo. Uh, you can clone it. You can use it for whatever you want. This is video number zero because we are programmers. So uh, in this video, we are going to just create the project and uh, set up the database. While you are on the repo, you can also start it if you found this helpful. And now let's get into the code. So once you clone the repo in your local machine and open it in your code editor, you would see a couple of things, a script folder and an index.js file followed by a package log JSON and a package JSON file. To get the node modules folder, you just need to run npm install and this will download all the packages that are defined in my package.json. So currently there are just three. There is .env, express and PostgreSQL, And this will then create a node modules folder with all those dependencies. So you don't have to care about this node modules folder. Now first let's take a look at the database schema that I have. So inside of the scripts folder, there are a bunch of files. So let's start with the schema.sql. So here in this file, we are actually creating two schemas, a user's forum public and a user's forum private. And we'll get to why do we need these two schemas when we talk about uh, the index.js file. So schema, if you don't know, is a layer below a database inside of Postgres and a schema can contain its own functions, tables, triggers, and stuff like that. And these are very convenient when you're trying to organize tables in your database. There is another thing that I'd like to talk about and that's the extends.sql. So here we create two extensions, a UUID extension and a PG crypto extension. And again, we'll just get to these two extensions uh, when you talk about the register dot SQL file. Now let's talk about the two tables that I have here, the users table. So the users table is pretty simple. The users table is created in users forum public schema and the table consists of an ID followed by the first name, last name, email and created on. So these are the five basic fields that I wanted on my user in my user table. The ID here is the primary key and it is of type UUID and this is created automatically using the UUID extension that we created in the extensions.sql and we call the UUID generate v4 function from that extension. This will generate a UUID for us. Uh, then we have the first name which is of type text which is of course not null. Similarly the last name and we have the email field here which is of type text but has a check on it and it's also unique right. So there are a lot of complex and simple regexes for, for validating an email. I went ahead with this, but if you want something more stringent, there are versions of this, which would, which you might want to take a look at. There is also this created on, which would be helpful when you're trying to filter records based on when they were created. Uh, so this is the created on with type timestamp, which is not null. And, uh, the default is, now, which is basically uh, the time that the record got created. So you don't have to pass in this. This will be created automatically by Postgres. Now let's talk about another table, which is the accounts.sql table. And this is again, a very uh, simple table as well. And I'll talk about why do we need two tables and accounts as well as user, as well as a user's table. So the accounts table is created on the user's forum private schema, similar to the UUID 
in users we have an uuid created for an id in the accounts table which is the primary key and uses the uuid generate v4 function there is a user id which references the users forum public dot users and uh, we have a del on delete cascade action similar to it we have an email but here we have the password and a created on timestamp the reason i have two separate tables for capturing a user is because the accounts table holds sensitive information that is the user password and i don't want this table to be exposed to postgre file making sure that there is a users table in the in the public schema allows us to filter users or search for users so if you want to create a search functionality uh, you don't have to touch sensitive tables anymore you can just go through the users table which basically has public information it doesn't have the password here uh, i'll also attach a database design diagram and there will be a link in the description so now let's take a look at the register function so this function would allow anyone who is using the forum to sign up and create an account in the database this is a simple function return using plpg sql now plpg sql is a language which is similar to sql so here i've created a function called register user and observe that i've created it on uh, on the users forum public schema now this takes in an email address a password a first name and the last name as its input parameters and what it returns is a user object right and here i have declared two things a uuid and a register reg underscore user which is of type user in the register user function what happens is there is an insert command which inserts this record into the users table and it it returns the inserted record as a registered user and since we have another table for user management which is the users forum private dot accounts accounts table we need to insert the record whenever a user is registering into the accounts table as well so here we insert the email user id and password and i can just pass in the email as it is that is dollar 1 so dollar 1 dollar 3 and dollar 4 are actually the input parameters right so dollar 1 here is the email dollar 2 is password dollar 3 is first name and dollar 4 is last name in the insert call here i pass in the email which is dollar 1 the user id is what i get after i create the users record in the users table that's why i'm using reg underscore user dot id so that it creates a reference to the row in the users table and here i use the crypt function from the pg crypto extension that we created in the extensions.sql file and the crypt function takes in password and a gen salt which would then which would then create a very obscure string and store it as a password right so we are not storing passwords as plain text we are storing them as we are storing them as hashes which are pretty much unreadable if anyone does break into break into the database and then we just return the registered user there is one important thing that you need to make sure is that you need to mark the function as volatile so this is the register user function now let's talk about index.json file uh, so i have installed three packages as a part of this project one is express the second is postgre file obviously and the third is env so env allows me to load environment variables uh, from a file and i've excluded those from the uh, from the git repo because some of those contain sensitive information so here i require express here i require postgre file i create an app from express pretty standard boilerplate stuff and then i load postgre file endpoint as a middleware so i pass in the postgre file function to the app.use uh, so it mounts it as a middleware so any request that goes to slash graphql will be, will be intercepted by the postgre file middleware here so the postgre file function takes in the database url which for me is i can show you guys so dot env and this is my localhost url for uh, for my database now let's go back to the index.js file and so i pass in the database url and the second argument that i pass is the schema that i want postgre file to pick up postgre file if you haven't seen my video uh, is a library which creates a graphql api from your postgres database automatically right so it creates crud and all of those endpoints for uh, for you by just introspecting the schema right 
and you don't want that to happen to all schemas in your database. You can just restrict it to one. You just need to pass in the schema for which Postgres file will create those uh, mutations and queries. Then these are three variables which I wouldn't recommend if you're running it in production, but for development, these are very helpful. One is watch PG, which basically makes sure that whenever there is a change in the database, Postgres file picks that up and makes appropriate changes. There is a also a GraphQL property that I pass as true, which then creates a interface where I can go and kind of view things. And there is an enhanced GraphQ GraphQL, which gives extra options. That's pretty much it. And then I just start the server. So actually my server is already running. Let's go to localhost 3000. And as you can see, uh, this doesn't output anything because it cannot, there is no get handler defined, but there is a GraphQL, uh, endpoint defined, which it can handle because I have enabled GraphQL to true. That's why you can access localhost slash GraphQL. I have a bunch of queries here written already just to fasten the process. You won't have these here. I have a query called list users, which basically lists all users. So remember that I haven't created all of these things, right? So if you look at all these, so if I say, if I want to add another query, you have all of these queries right here listed over here, right? So all users, uh, user, user by email, user by ID. So remember, I haven't written any of these Postgres file has created them for me. Similarly, the mutations here, the create user, delete user, delete user by email. These are all created by Postgres file, except the register user one, which we have written. Now, since we have marked the function as volatile, Postgres file knows that this is a mutation and that's why it makes it available in the mutations column here. In production, you don't want all of these, right? You don't want a create user and a register user, right? You want it to go through the register user and nobody should be able to access a delete user openly, right? And as we kind of get deeper into the project, we will try to address this issue, right? How can we remove all of these all the automatically created mutations or even the queries that are automatically created, right? We want them to be accessed only by certain rules. Now let's try to create a user really quick, right? So uh, there's a register user mutation, uh, which takes in the first name. So this is my last name. I pass in an email ID and I pass in a password. Uh, and then uh, the output is the user object where I uh, output the ID, email, first name, last name, which would probably want to want to show when whenever a user signs up, so like something like welcome first name comma last name or welcome at email address. So something like that. So we can return all of those things from the mutation as well. So now let's call uh, run this registered user function. And here I have got a duplicate value because I already have a user with this email address. So let's just change this to two and let's call this and voila, this creates a user for you. So this is test user test uh, dot add this and it also returns all of those things, right? Now there is also a query, which is user by email. So if you try to run this, it returns you all of those things, right? So last name is user created on ID and stuff like that. There is also a query which lists all users, which we can run. And these, this then basically shows all the users that I've created in the database. Just to make sure that these are actually inserted in our database. Uh, this is the query that I run and it, these are actually records in my database, right? So this is pretty much magical because to get this functionality, we have written technically less than 14 lines of code, right? So this is actually very, very cool. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to follow this series, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. And yeah, thank you guys for joining and I'll see you guys in the next one.